We are Casey and Savannah, and we've been best friends for 10 years. Give me a look at that. They're like a printed, you can see the mountains actually. Over the years, we have been on many adventures, including plenty of travel, hiking the John Muir Trail, starting multiple businesses, building out a camper van, and creating a little homestead in the city. You even may have seen one of our mini DIY stock tank pool videos. We recently bought five acres of raw land in the Upper Cumberland area of Tennessee and are embarking on our biggest adventure yet. Follow along as we build our off-grid homestead from the ground up. Hey guys. Hey guys. I'm Savannah. I'm Casey. And we're very excited to bring you along today to uh, preserve some food that we have been bringing in from the garden. Yes, we're very excited to have this counter that you see before yeah. you. It's more like an island. What is the significance of this wood that we're cutting? <laughs> this is the wood that came from our tree that was in our backyard and it has been through a lot, been milled, and this is the first piece we're using. What are we gonna make? A little... We're gonna make a little island for the kitchen so we can actually process a lot of the produce that is coming out of our garden right now. We just have so many tomatoes. And we really don't have a... We don't have any counter space at all, so we kind of, we have our little cooking station. There's no counter space. We just kind of like use a armrest or something <laughs> like that here and there if we need it, so gonna be a game changer for our kitchen life. This wood is unbelievably heavy. Yeah. So it's a very special little thing and we've actually uh, not had any counter space until this very moment. <laughs> yeah, so it, that's been amazing. If you're new to the channel, this is your first time watching us, we have been converting this shed into our home. That's why it kind of looks like this in the background. So we have a very rugged kitchen. Yes, we are in the works to, in the next couple of weeks to really streamlining and getting our shed some like big changes happening in here and so I think we're getting closer and closer to having a real kitchen but this is our you know this is we've been putting off preserving any food because all we have is like one little burner and right. no space to chop or do any of that stuff so since we built this we are going to be able to do a few little things we're just gonna kind of show you and tell you some things we're doing to preserve things while we're waiting for our kitchen to be established. Because it's time. They're, we're harvesting, harvesting, and we've got to do something with it. So, yeah. And some things are just sitting on the plant because we are like, I don't know what to do with this. I, We can only eat so many things fresh. So join us today as we preserve our harvest. We've started some seeds for the fall garden. And uh, we have these, let me show you, these epic gardening cells. They are by far the best cells to start uh, seeds in. They're really hard. Like I think uh, if you go to their videos, they have them driving over them and stepping on them and stuff. They're really, really hard. And they have these big holes at the bottom so that your roots actually have room to grow. We just, we actually really enjoy just a whole planting process in them. 
because it was just really easy to put the soil in and um, just we really like them big big fans so what we have started here this just says kale um, we have some a lot of different varieties. we have a, a lot of different varieties of kale uh, cabbage kohlrabi broccoli cauliflower beets lots of lettuces we're starting salvanova lettuce which i've been wanting to grow forever now calendula which we have not ever had luck starting calendula from seed i know so many people like have calendula just growing wild at their place and they have more than they even want we have not had that luck let's see what else leaks those are the those are the main things that we are starting right now and yeah so i need to go put these outside because we had them in here until they sprouted and now they need to be in the sun i'll be right back we've been harvesting a ton of tomatoes out in the garden I've been very pleased that the paste tomatoes have actually been doing really well, which is the kind of tomato you really want when you're canning for the most part. You can use anything, but they don't have a lot of liquid as much as like a slice of tomato. We're not in a position to can them right now, so we have been freezing them. So I just kind of make a little X at the bottom and cut the core out and then freeze them. and. Obviously, you wouldn't want to then thaw it out and eat it fresh, but they're really perfect for canning, tomato sauce. When they thaw out, the skin peels right off, so that just makes it very easy. So we'll make uh, tomato sauce, salsa, you know, all the different things, but that's a lot more steps in that canning because you have to cook the sauce down and do all those kind of things, and we are not quite set up for that just yet. We've been getting so many tomatoes, but I'm a little concerned about future tomatoes because we have tomato blight. This is my first time ever dealing with tomato blight. Um, we've had so much rain. I, it's unbelievable. And the rest of the country is like begging for rain. Well, we have it. It's all coming here. And normally I'm really good about pruning the a, a big chunk of the leaves on the bottom half of the, the tomato but this is the most tomatoes I've ever planted and I just didn't do it and now we have blight. So we're trying to find it and trying to pull off all those leaves and doing what I can but we'll see. To be determined but we're still breaking in a lot of tomatoes right now. I hope it stays up. Still hours left of daylight 
entire box is basil. There's a few different kinds of basil. This is like a mammoth leaf basil. There's a lettuce leaf basil in here, but it's, I wouldn't say that's the size of a lettuce leaf. Um, and then there's just like generic, I think Genevieve's basil. Um, tons of it. So you probably already guessed it, but we're gonna make pesto. And this is going to make a lot of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take all the leaves off um, and put them in this bowl because there are these are huge stems. We don't want that in our pesto. So since we live off grid, everything we do right now is has got to be kind of like conserving water. And so we are washing this basil, but we are using limited water. We tried to make sure we got kind of like any gross leaves out. If we saw any bugs that we just made sure they weren't in this actual bowl. It's a lot of work to rinse things off when you live off grid. So you will not see us using mass amounts of water. We also have to filter our water, which is why we have a, back, a Berkey back here. That's how we filter our water. So since we have so much basil, we're actually gonna make a batch of basil tea. And we're gonna do that in this mason jar. We'll probably do really concentrated version so that we can mix it with water and uh, We'll have it in the fridge and kind of make more than just like a couple glasses of tea. Uh, that will only require a little bit of this, so we're gonna end up making a lot of pesto. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this drained. Casey's making boiling water right now for the tea, and she's also gone to get a whole other bucket of uh, water because we've already used an entire one today. I'm using walnuts, not pine nuts, because we have a whole big jar of those. I'm using minced garlic because we had a terrible garlic harvest this year, and we actually planted a lot of garlic from our garden that we had saved from the year before, because that year we harvested almost 300 heads of garlic, which is way more than we can go through. I was gonna have to buy garlic and because we don't really have like a great dishwashing setup I did not want to be minting a ton of garlic so I'm just using already minced garlic but you can use fresh garlic I'm sure many people would recommend that <laughs> more batches to make but I'm gonna go ahead and put this batch in some jars and we're actually just gonna freeze it since this is a jar we're gonna leave a pretty good amount that's for like three-fourths inch headspace so we have room 
for expansion when it freezes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make all the batches that we need and come back when we're done. You guys, it is 91 degrees in our house, so this is, we're gonna have to stop preserving for a minute, but uh, we have nine of these jars of pesto, and that's a lot. That's probably all that we need. I might do three more jars whenever the basil grows back. Just to round it out, we'll see. I'm just gonna put the lids on so that they can go in the freezer. And then we're going to take a break from kitchen things. The reason it's 91 degrees in here is because one, it's, it's hot outside, but because we live in a shed, we, the walls are really thin and we have not insulated it yet. And the sun is just like blaring on this side of the house. And this is the time of day, like the afternoon is when it's just the hottest in here. And today's an exceptionally warm day. We have AC, but there is no competing with no insulation in the sun just beating down on this wall over here. There they are. You can't see them, I just realized. They pop these in the freezer and they'll be good to go. So this is a trombon sino squash. It's a really cool squash. You can eat it when it's smaller like this. You can even eat it sm when it's smaller than this. And you can also leave it on the vine to ripen and turn into something like a winter squash, which Casey's bringing to me right now. This squash we brought from our house in Nashville, our garden in Nashville, and we had so many of these at the end of the season, we ended up giving a lot of them away, and it is like butternut squash, and we still have two of these that we need to do something with, and we have the plants growing, so we'll have a lot of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up and I'm gonna put it in the freezer. That's nice. At this stage, it tastes more like zucchini. I'm trying to figure out what I wanna, sh if I wanna shred anything. I don't think I do. And it's a little, I think, denser than zucchini, if I recall. But we ate it just fine last year. And what we did at the end of the year, in our garden last year is we made an end of summer pasta sauce and so we put some of this we put beans lots of tomatoes onions garlic lots of different things this is just nice because it bulks it up but it still tastes like a tomato pasta sauce and we ate every last bit of it over the winter here on our land so i'm going to go ahead because we're not making that right now i'm going to cut this up into cubes just like i'm doing and I'm just going to freeze it so that when we make that pasta sauce, we'll just already have this stuff ready to go in there. Alright, I have a good amount of cubed squash, summer squash, and I'm just going to put it in a gallon freezer bag I know some people freeze summer squash to eat like they thaw it out or they just like put it in soups or whatever um, I don't think the texture is going to hold very well but this is going to be in a sauce and blended so the texture doesn't really matter and this will go with our tomatoes in the freezer who will have a weird texture when they come out but everything will taste good when it's together in the sauce all right so that's how much it filled in the bag i will fill this when we have more squash just fill this to the top before i start another bag although this whole bag would probably be enough for the sauce uh but that's all we're doing with that So I did sweeten this, added a little bit of sugar, but you certainly don't have to.
Oh, that's really good. We let it sit probably like a couple of hours. It's really not that concentrated. I wouldn't add any more water to it. I think it would water down. You, you could also like add regular, like add this to a regular iced tea or hot tea. You could drink it hot, whatever. It, it's really good. It's just like basil flavored water, which sounds maybe kind of weird, but it's actually pretty good. It's very refreshing. I'm currently arranging all of our tomatoes um, that are kind of still ripening into a rainbow because I want to take a picture of them. A lot of tomatoes. Alright, here is the tomato rainbow. All right guys, it's several days later. We actually had planned on doing some canning this week, but time has gotten away from us and it's been a lot of days just too hot to actually do that in here. So I'm gonna be cutting up these peppers. There are jalapenos in here. There's one jalapeno, which is a not hot jalapeno. And oh, what are these, ancho peppers? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna kind of like quickly largely dice these and I'm going to freeze them so we can use them later on things like salsa or if we want to put peppers um I don't know in like a sausage onion pepper situation but we have had pretty unhealthy pepper plants they actually were really growing pretty large but because of all the rain they're doing the same thing the tomatoes are doing where um the leaves are just spotted and it's just like the disease is spreading so we don't know if any of those plants are going to make it much longer so we may not have many more peppers in this so I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping them Alright, I have all the peppers cut. This is a whole bag of jalapenos and these are ancho chilies and I separated them because they're a little different heat. So we could use the this whole bag in one dish. Um, and hopefully we will use this to spice things, maybe make some salsa, it just depends on how many tomatoes we get. But we have these three gallon bags of tomatoes that we have put in the freezer so far and then we also have this yellow cherry tomato bag I want to try to make a yellow tomato sauce so we're keeping them separate and then we have the whole bag of zucchini uh, trombantina squash there's actually another one this size out there that I need to cut up and then we have all these tomatoes and this isn't even all the ones that are inside. There's another bowl over there of them. So some of these are still ripening and when they do, they will go into bags. And some of them, Casey eats probably a tomato a day, would you say? Well, yeah. Yeah, and tomato day. So she'll eat some of these. But with all of this stuff, the goal is to can it down the line when we have 
our kitchen built out and are able to you know use more dishes and clean things more easily and set up our canner while also chopping vegetables uh, we just don't have the space for it right now so this is gonna help us keep our harvest and then can it when we are able to do that I also forgot that we made pesto so we have nine of these jars in the freezer they're already frozen solid and uh, those are ready to be used and they will stay in the freezer we won't be canning these it's a little different of a preserving video because we didn't do any canning or freeze drying or dehydrating or anything like that uh, but we do have a freezer so we are going to use that and this will hopefully all end up in cans at some point thanks so much for watching guys if you want to see more content like this give our video a thumbs up leave us a comment below let us know what you're doing with your garden harvest love to chat about what's coming out of your garden and subscribe to our channel thanks so much for watching guys bye